How's it going, guys? We have an easy question for internal medicine slash path. I will uh, cut to the chase, tell you exactly you need to know, not waste your time. So before we get started, please subscribe my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to our group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. 65-year-old man comes to the physician because of progressive weakness in both legs for the past six months. He's had difficulty standing up from a chair and going upstairs. He finds it easier to stand up from a chair if he rocks back and forth first. He has also had a 7 kilo weight loss during this time. He has smoked two packs of cigarettes daily for 45 years. Physical examination shows weakness of hip flexion and knee extension. The Babinski sign is absent. Chest x-ray shows a mass in the left lower lobe. Laboratory studies show an elevated ESR and normal creatine kinase. Question wants to know the most likely location of this patient's abnormality. Let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice A, anterior horn cell, wrong answer. This is going to refer to, for USMLE purposes, poliomyelitis, okay, uh, as well as Wernick Hoffman syndrome. That's floppy baby syndrome. Wernick Hoffman syndrome, yieldness pretty much non existent for USMLE. It's just a, a sophisticated sounding diagnosis. You can be aware of spinal muscular atrophy. Actually, it shows up once on a 2CK neuroform. That's it. Uh, but you need to know polio affects the anterior horn cells, okay of the uh, corticospinal tract. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, muscle, wrong answer. Okay, and now this is going to be an answer that a lot of people will choose, however. Uh, some people might think that this is polymyositis or polymyalgia rheumatica. You watching this clip might say, hmm, that's not what I think. That's great. Okay, a lot of students do, and I've observed it. So there's proximal mu muscle weakness in this guy. I should mention that uh, for polymyositis, uh, in addition to muscle weakness on physical exam, uh, there can often be a normal creatine kinase. So the way we differentiate polymyositis from polymyalgia rheumatica is polymyositis has an increased CK or muscle and or muscle weakness on physical exam. Polymyalgia rheumatica doesn't, okay? There's a lot we can talk about in that regard. I don't want to make that a 14-minute tangent right now. Waste of fucking time. Choice C, myoneural junction is the correct answer, Okay. Now, this can also be written as neuromuscular junction, okay? But I've seen it as myoneural junction. The diagnosis here is Lambert-Eaton syndrome, secondary to small cell bronchogenic carcinoma, all right? So uh, this answer choice in general refers to either myasthenia gravis or Lambert-Eaton syndrome. But this guy, he's got a lung mass, clearly, okay? He's a smoker, 90-packer history. So smokers are classically at risk. Uh, obviously for any lung cancer, but also classically small cell and squamous cell. So uh, squamous cell secretes PTHRP, can it cause hypercalcemia. Small cell can secrete ADH, cause SIDH. Uh, it can secrete ACTH, cause Cushing syndrome. It can secrete anti-HU and anti-YO antibodies, cause uh, neuropathy. And it can also secrete uh, antibodies against presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels, causing Lambert-Eaton syndrome, which is this. Okay, now the muscle weakness will improve with activity. They might tell you the uh, in a USMLE vignette, the guy ro rocks back and forth first before being able to get up from a chair, or he is unable to get up from a chair, but after trying a few times, he's able to do it. Another thing they might tell you for Lambert Eaton syndrome is that he is able to successfully perform upward gaze for 60 seconds, whereas myasthenia gravis. Uh, you cannot do that. Okay, so myasthenia gravis gets worse with activity. Uh, classically develops diplopia, dysphagia, uh, ptosis over the course of a day. Lambert Eaton syndrome improves with activity. Okay, myasthenia gravis, of course, being antibodies against postsynaptic uh, acetylcholine receptors. Don't conflate, don't mix that up with uh, Lambert Eaton syndrome here. As I just fucking said, antibodies against presynaptic voltage gated calcium channels. Okay, so. And uh, myasthenia gravis can also be a perineoplastic of thymoma. I should just mention that. Quickly through the other answer choices, peripheral axon, wrong answer. This could refer to Guillain Barre. Okay, that's the highest yield uh, etiology related to this. So, of course, uh, Campylobacter viral infection, and then you can get uh, inflammatory uh, myelinopathy. Okay, so ascending weakness slash paralysis of both the upper and lower limbs. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, spinal cord. Uh, wrong answer. This is just obviously very general. Could refer to a million things. Brown Sequard syndrome. Okay. Uh, that's high yield. Uh, viral infection can cause transverse myelitis, and that can present as Brown Sequard syndrome. Okay. Uh, 
bronze card syndrome is not going to be someone fucking stabs someone perfectly where half of the spinal cord is transected. It doesn't happen like that. Uh, it's going to be usually from viral infection. Okay. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.